Reading is the strongest signal for success in the future that I've ever seen. It is the strongest, strongest, strongest. I got my first job in radio when I was 16 years old because I was a great reader. Have That's you ever met a person for. who was a great reader when they were young who was not successful? You never, never. It is the absolute best foundation ever in life. I was always sort of really uh, interested in reading when I was a kid, um, and I read a a everything that I could get my hands on. I read the encyclopedia. I read At every what age. Um, age nine or ten. Okay. Um, I, I, well, and not that I actually wanted to read the encyclopedia, but I ran out of things to read, so in desperation I read the encyclopedia. There's a reason why we have the technology that we do, at least in part because fans of science fiction have been influenced by those ideas and have taken those ideas and put them into practice in the world. That which we focus our imaginations on, Tom, is what we manifest in this realm. That's the secret. That's the deal. The thing about a book that you can't get from a discussion is that a book is, a book is like a portrait as opposed to a photograph. You know, a photograph, it's click, that's that. A, a, a portrait you layer on and layer on and layer on and work over on for weeks. You still have the same single image, but there's this depth to it. And a book enables you to think and then rethink and think and then rethink. And so you can go deeper in a book than you can, I would say, in any other medium. The power of science fiction literature and its connection to the what if is it actually inspires us it invites us to create the world as a reflection of, of what we can imagine. How many people believe that we could go beyond what we believe that we could go beyond? And I think really the key to that, one of the most obvious ways of doing that is reading. Um, I really feel like it's one of the most valuable skills to master today. It's, it's something where you're, if somebody has decades of experience in anything and they put it into a book and you could read it in a day or two or three or four, you could download decades into days, I think it's the ultimate advantage there is. And um, in, in Game of Thrones, there's, there's this quote saying that a reader lives a thousand lives. A person who does not read lives only one. The first obstacle to effective reading is lack of education. It's not a skill that we were taught, right? You're not born with the ability to read. And the last time you took a reading class, how old were you? Six. So has the, has the velocity, has the variety, has, has the demand increased a little bit since you were six? But we're still reading like we're a six-year-old. Does that make sense? And so you want to upgrade those kind of skills. Second obstacle to effective reading is lack of focus. Lack of focus. How many of you, when you read, your mind wanders and you can't concentrate? One of the reasons why is you're reading too slow. And this is a big rumor being spread around, I think, by slow readers. But if I, if I ask you to read faster, what do you think will happen to your re reading understanding comprehension? You feel like it'll go down. In actuality, it goes up. Like we have online program in 100, 180 country students, so we have a lot of data. Fastest readers tend to have the best comprehension because they have the best focus. Because your brain is a supercomputer, but when most people read, they feed this supercomputer one word at a time. Metaphorically, notice the feeling that you have, the sensation you feel when I talk slowly. You're like, you know, you're like, and then your mind after over time will start wandering, it'll be distracted, you start falling asleep, you start doing other things. Isn't that what you're doing already when you're reading? You're reading too slow. Just like when I talk too slow, your mind goes everywhere. That's the reason why. And so when you go faster, it's like driving a car faster. If you go driving slow, you know, you're drinking your tea, you're texting, you're doing your makeup, you're, you're, you're doing all these different things. But if you're racing a car, you're just doing one thing. You're just driving, right? And that's why when you read faster, you have better focus. And because you have better focus, you have better comprehension. The last reason I would say that we got to fix for your reading speed is this thing called subvocalization. What what's subvocalization? Real quick, the inner talk. 
How many of you notice when you read something, you hear an inner voice, this voice inside your head, reading along with you? Hopefully it's your own voice. It's not like somebody else's voice. The reason why it's a challenge is if you have to say all the words to understand them, you can only read as fast as you could speak. And you don't have to say New York City or Statue of Liberty or, you know, or even if it's an abbreviation, NYC. You don't have to say that in order to understand what it is any more than you would say like a stop sign. 95% of the words you've seen, you don't have to pronounce. That's why, how many of you listen to audiobooks and, and podcasts at higher speeds? Because you can understand it just fine, right? You just can't talk that fast. And so that's why it's a limitation when you're reading. Now, the last thing is this, is just keep a reading list. Keep a list of like targeted books as you hear all the time, keep it in your phone. Because I have like this, everybody has a to-do list, but I have like a, to, I have a really long to learn list. And this is my like to read list. And that's the thing, one book could change your life forever. When I first taught this, one of those, my first students, she read 30 books in 30 days. I mean, can you imagine the books you would read, not skimming or scanning or getting the gist of it? Not just, because that's what you can understand. Like, I don't want you to skip it and not understand it. Like, my clients are like, you know, uh, they're, they're financial advisors, they're attorneys, they're healers, they're, they're medical doctors. You don't want your doctor to get the gist of what she's reading, <laughs> right? So you want them to focus. So what I would say with this is, like, she read this, I want to find out not how. I know exactly how. Because the skills are simple, guys. I want to know why. And I found out her mother was dying of terminal cancer. And the book she was reading, the book to save her mom's life, because she was only given two, day, two months to live by doctors. And they're book, reading books that you read, books on wellness, energy medicine, alternative medicine, health, diet. And I was like, good luck, you know, I said prayers. Six months later, I get a call from this young lady, and she's crying and crying and crying. Finally, when she stops, I find out there are tears of joy, that her mother not only survived, but it's really starting to get better. Doctors don't know how, they don't know why, they called it a miracle but her mother attributed 100% to the great advice she got from her daughter who learned it from all these books. And I realized at that moment that me as a broken child who couldn't read for years and years, I realized that would be my mission, that knowledge, if knowledge is power, then learning and especially reading is your superpower.